about our action. So we're announcing four weeks of industrial action. Uh, from uh, today, we will be putting on a series of 48-hour strikes in December and January. After industry negotiators representing Network Rail and the train operators failed to offer any new deals to reach a settlement. So over 40,000 members across Network Rail and the 14 train operating companies will take a series of 48-hour strikes on the 13th and 14th and 16th and 17th of December and then again on the January the 3rd and 4th and the 6th and 7th. There will also be an overtime ban across the railways of all of our members from the 18th of December until the 2nd of January, meaning that we'll be taking continuous industrial action for more than four weeks. Despite every effort made by our negotiators, it is clear now that the government is directly interfering in our attempts to reach a settlement. The union suspended previous strike action in good faith to allow for intensive negotiations to resolve the dispute. Yet Network Rail has failed to make an improved offer on jobs, pay and conditions for our members during the last two weeks of talks. At the same time, the rail delivery group, representing the train operating companies, has also broken a promise to make a meaningful offer on pay and conditions, and even cancelled negotiations that were due to take place yesterday with one hour's notice. We also have, have evidence from all 14 of the train operating companies denying that the rail delivery group has the authority to conduct negotiations on their behalf. Even as the RDG yesterday urged us to come back to the table and develop a deal, we now doubt that either the rail delivery group or the train operators themselves actually have the authority to negotiate a settlement to this dispute. And we have the evidence here with us, uh, the letters they, that they've written and that their uh, lawyers have written to us. The authority now sits, di sits directly with the Secretary of State, Mark Harper and he seems intent on blocking any deal being developed between the parties. I will be taking this up with him at a meeting that he, arranged, he has arranged with me for this Thursday morning. This latest round of strikes will show how important our members are to the running of the country and will send a clear message that we want a good deal on job security paying conditions for our people. We have been reasonable, but it is impossible to find a negotiated settlement when the dead hand of the government is presiding over and blocking a resolution in these talks. The employers are in disarray and saying different things to different people, sometimes at the same time. The whole process has become a farce that only the new Secretary of State can now resolve. And I will be calling on him to act up to his responsibilities this Thursday. In the meantime, our message to the public is we are sorry to inconvenience you but we urge you to direct your anger and frustration at the government and the railway employers during this latest phase of action. We call upon all trade unionists in Britain to take a stand and fight for better paying conditions in their respective industries. And we will seek to coordinate action, including strike action, where we can. Working people across our class need a pay rise, and we are determined to win that for our members in the RMT and we will support all other workers in their campaigns and actions. Thank you very much. Helena from BBC. Four of the dates in the run up to Christmas, I think you mentioned uh, 13th, 14th, 16th, and 17th of December. What do you say to the millions of people who have and to the businesses who have already suffered? Well, we apologise for that. We don't want this disruption. Our members will lose a serious amount of money taking this action, and we will do what we can to support them. But it's time for this uh, government to get serious. They have created this dispute by cutting £2 billion worth of funding from the mainline railway, National Rail. They've also cut £2 billion from London Transport, and we've got disputes there. So they have made those cuts, and the effect of that is that thousands of our members are under threat of the less of their, uh, loss of their jobs. We have serious doubts that the services will be able to be maintained with these cuts. 
They're bringing in stringent cuts to the safety regime on the railway in order to make the redundancies, and they're going to strip up our terms and conditions. And let's not forget, we haven't had a pay rise, most of our members, for three years now, and we're coming to the turn of the year again with no deal in place. So we're serious about what we're doing. We apologise for that disruption, but really the Secretary of State rather than sitting on his hands, has got to get down to the serious business of creating a settlement in this industry. Yesterday I was told directly by the most senior person working for the train operating companies that he has been stopped from offering us a deal. Even a deal that we may not like that we could develop, he has been prevented from doing that by the Department for Transport and it seems that they are uh, stuck on the idea that they will continue this dispute into the new year for whatever reason they've got. So the public's anger should be at the government and we hope they have some sympathy for our members and for all the other uh, workers in this industry and across industries and across the economy that are struggling to make ends meet and earn a living in this society.